And welcome back, it's Wind Street. Today, we're adding a dynamic radial timer to our block hitting mechanic. And the best part, it's super easy to set up in GDevelop. By the end of this video, you'll be able to add radial timers to your own game. Let's get started. We'll begin by starting with an empty project. Today, we'll be working with a shape painter object. Let's create this object and name it radial timer. Next, set the outline color. This will actually be the color of the timer itself. Then go ahead and set the outline size. I'll be using 8. The fill color doesn't actually matter since we'll be setting the opacity to 0. Now navigate to the Behaviors tab. We'll add the behavior Tween, which will allow us to smoothly grow our circular drawing over the duration of the timer. Next, add a single variable. This will track the degree that the circle currently is. Finally, let's enhance the visual by adding a 2D effect in the Effects tab. The default is an outline which starts at 2 pixels, which works perfect. And I'll just go ahead and set mine to black. Now that's all set up, we can jump in to the event sheet. For our practice run, we're just going to create one on click. So we'll add a condition to detect when the left mouse button is down. For our actions, we'll create a shape painter object at the cursor position. This object will act as our drawing pad. Next, we'll add an action to draw the circle. Since we've already set the position, we can use 0, 0 for the coordinates. We'll set the radius to 20, and for now, use a star angle of 0 and an end angle of 360. On preview, we can now see a circle being created wherever we click. However, we're technically creating a new circle every tick, and they're stacking on top of each other, which will eventually affect performance. So let's go ahead and fix this. We'll need to restrict the creation by adding a trigger once condition. This will be a sub event, and then we'll go ahead and move our create object radial timer action into the new action attached to our trigger ones. Now we're ready to make it so the circle doesn't start out as a full circle, but instead grows. So we'll need to use our variable. This is done by changing our draw action, and instead of having the end angle always be 360, we'll go ahead and put the radial timer degree variable in there instead. Now, back in our trigger once event, we can go ahead and create another action. This action will be a tween for our variable degree, which will affect the radial timer object, and it'll go up to 360 over the course of two seconds. And we'll keep the easing as linear since we want this to be a consistent time throughout. Then I'll go ahead and give this a name called circle. And finally, to clean up the timers once they've finished, we'll add a new event, and this will be a repeat for each instance and we'll put radial timer in as the instance. Our condition will check if the degree of radial timer equals 360. Then if it does, the action will be to delete the radial timer. And at this point, we're really close to having our project working already with just one minor inconvenience. If you start a new tween, which is done by clicking before the first one finishes, it'll reset all the radial timers to take two full seconds to finish getting up to 360 degrees. So even if they're already at 350, it'll take two seconds to get that last 10 degrees. And you can see them all slowing down over time and all finishing at the same time. So to fix this, we will add one more sub event in our main event. This will be another repeat for each instance of radial timer. And in here, we're going to check if radial timer is playing the tween circle. And we'll right click that and invert it. So we'll make sure it's not playing. And then we can move our tween action up into that new event. This way it only starts that tween if it doesn't already exist. And there we go, we can create multiple radial timers and they can all finish of their own accord. So let's find out how to add this to our project we already have. Taking a look at our main Mario block project, the concept remains the same. We will use the shape painter with the added tween behavior, degree variable, and some extra additional visual effects. However, in the event sheet, there'll be a few differences. So instead of activating on our mouse click, we will create the radial timer object inside of our collision block event. Since we want it to happen only on the first collision, we will add it where we check if our collision counter is equal to 1. Then instead of going from 0 to 360 degrees, we're going to go from negative 90 to 271. Why? Well, starting at negative 90 positions the timer pointing upwards first. And adding 360 degrees to that will complete the full circle. Then I just add that extra one degree to ensure the circle visually looks closed properly. Lastly, instead of a two second duration, we need to set the duration to match our block's active time, which is five seconds. 
Next up, in order to keep our timer visible, we'll want to create our draw action under a condition that ensures the block has been hit once, but hasn't been hit more than five seconds ago. And finally, our cleanup step, which is essentially the same for each of our radial timers if the degree is at its max, which is 271 now, we delete it. And that's it. Now our radial timer is fully integrated into our Mario style block system. If you were able to use this tutorial to make yourself a radial timer, show me some love with a thumbs up. Or if you're feeling crazy and want to do more, consider joining my channel membership to support me in my quest to support you. As always, a big thanks to my current supporters, Anthony, Rob, and Don. You are all awesome. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.